Opening moments of Vinland Saga. He's got a silver hair. Ooh, very surreal. Maybe a dream sequence to start up the series. A vision. I can already tell this is going to be a very unique and visually striking anime. And a wife and a kid in the background. Helga. But you know, an anime of family is just something to lose. Was he just daydreaming in the middle of battle? And right into it. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, look at this. Look at this setting. Year 987. Just, you know, thinking about my fam. I want to watch. Watch out, yep. Seemed very calm. I'm loving this setting already. Feels super unique. Oh man. Oh, nice. Wow. I'm getting some Princess Mononoke vibes. <laughs> just wasted no time, just cutting through them like grass. And then it rains blood. Brave of you, bold of you. And of course, it's hail and not rain, because, you know, gotta be epic. Rain is for weaklings. He just looks like disappointed. I'm disappointed in your fighting ability. Oh, he's been through some stuff. That's all right. That's fine. This dude is trying to choke him out underwater. That's that's not survival instinct. That's just a spite. He just looks sad. He just looks sad to be here. I guess this is just his life. I wonder how long the war has been going on. And a poignant sword falling to the bottom of the ocean. Well, this is a really interesting introduction. Wow, what an opening. There will be war. And Vikings. And boats. <laughs> And then opening, in the first episode no less. In case, you know, because of the setting and character design, you, you forgot this was an anime. Here is a, an anime opening with running! <laughs> Had to remind you, and more running. So I'm guessing this will be the main character. So many blonde people! Have I died and gone to Viking Valhalla? And more running. <laughs> Child running. I already know I'm gonna love this show, I can just feel it. A sad or drunk king? Eating apple cores. Oh, and what's his name from Gundam Wing? Vex was there. And then Rage. Anime opening Rage. Kind of went off the rails there at the end. <laughs> Man, what an introduction to the show. Uh, that was intense. Letting you know that there's going to be a lot of action and great action. And I'm so excited for the setting. Maybe that sounds weird to say. I don't think I've ever seen an anime that had this look, if you know what I mean. It's given me, uh, this is sort of an obscure reference, but you guys ever play the Steam series Banner Saga? The dude who we just saw shredding his enemies looks like he's he's been through some stuff. He's seen some stuff. I don't think he wants to be there. I'm guessing this is just a, another world, a world of war. Episode 1, Somewhere Far Away. There's the kid. A little peaceful village life to balance out the carnage. Year 1002 AD, Iceland. So it's a real place. Set in the real world, I mean. Thorfinn. That is the most jacked cow I've ever seen in my entire life. What are they feeding it, and where can I get some? <laughs> so is that his father? Is his father currently at war? Oh, but he was a- wait, I'm confused. He was a baby in that flashback, assuming that that's the father. Although it could be that the father's been at war for a really long time, and that's the last memory he has of his son. Waiting for daddy. When is daddy coming home? I don't know, son. He's he's busy shredding people into tiny pieces. Somewhere far away? Got a little bit of a dreamer. <laughs> I can't imagine what that must have felt like back in the day. You get in a boat and just go into the ocean, just on a vague hope or promise of other lands. Finland, Finland Saga. Oh, it's Leif Erikson. The Leif Erikson. And we set right to work, shredding its resources. <laughs> Look at all this friendship. Okay, yeah, that explains that. Oh, there he is. So I guess that was the past that we were seeing. An older war. 
This is already an interesting contrast, because, like, just putting myself in the shoes of this kid, and as someone who had all these fantasies when I was younger about adventure and traveling, for him hearing these stories, it just sounds great and, and heroic and thrilling. But this comes right on the heels of that, that terrible battle scene where we just saw that this guy was just super weary of everything. There's a vacuum between his innocence and what this world probably is that I, you know, I feel like it's going to get filled very abruptly in the first couple of episodes. It's just a little bit too peaceful in this village right now. Jormungandr. Oh no, they're casting doubt on Leif Erikson's story. Yeah, I, like I said, I can't even imagine how or what it takes to do something like that. I can't even drive a car without phone GPS. I couldn't even find the right gate on my last plane trip. Meanwhile, these people are riding planks of wood into unknown lands. Back me up on this, Thor's. Thor's knows. He knows what the world is. And here comes trouble. Catastrophe descends on the peaceful village. In case you forgot this was anime. There's Vinland Saga. Vinland, I mean. Yeah, this is a really interesting way to paint the perspective. There's obviously so much going on right now that the kids are insulated from. And mom's not in good health either. These people are just built different and would have killed a lot of people. Oh no, is it the... The dude? Imagine if she'd never fallen off that roof. Speaking of slaves... His father is already really interesting to me. You can tell he has so much on his shoulders that he's able to bear with strength. He doesn't really show it. He's just handling whatever demons he has on his own, giving his whole family and Thorfinn a chance to be peaceful, which is probably a huge burden. You know, I don't think most people could do that. It's possible that this whole existence is hanging on by a thread, you know, but he's decided to be that thread. And what they were just stranded there? Oh wow. Right. It's not all just a pleasant adventure fantasy. But what that probably means is that this is the best that they've found so far. The fact that they seem comfortable with this kind of life probably means they've left behind so much worse and might also even fear any kind of change just because they, they realize how unlikely this existence even is. I think that kind of thing often becomes a, a missing component of the analysis of, of what is when compared to what could be or what should be. Whatever you're born into can seem like it's the default state of things. But Attack on Titan had it right. You know, nature and life is cruel, can be cruel. All good things are, are pretty unlikely and hard fought. And a lot of times the obvious negatives that you can point to and question why they're there or seem like they're quick fixes might be byproducts of trying to escape something much worse. You know, it's, it's tricky to tease out what's what. I'm starting to think that Vinland Saga is not just a land, but connected to what might be one of the show's themes, which is about hope or dreams or striving to improve the, the lot of one's world. It's kind of a fantasy place, right? It's something to aspire to. And it carries a lot of danger. And that dragon legend is probably representative not of some actual danger, although it's possible there are also mystical forces in the show, but something like people's resistance to change because they understand how easy it would be for their peace to become unraveled. There's already this interesting mix of sort of this idealism and reality. Is he still alive? Is there still a chance? He was living in snow. Yeah, he's definitely going to bring trouble. It just means he was more afraid of what was there than the blizzard and death. This is the drunk king. Harold. At least he gave him a choice. 
if this is being set up to be something like a villain, at least there's some some nuance there. He doesn't seem like uh, just a cold, ruthless killer. Harold too, probably just making the most of the cruel world he found himself in. Yeah, it's really interesting what's going on with Thorfinn. There's a lot that has to change really quickly. There's like a lot of perspective to be had. I feel like we're going to watch his innocence sort of unravel before our eyes. Wow. Yeah, that's his biggest fear right now. Half Van. I just know this guy's life is difficult. He's just too compassionate. For this war-filled world. Only you can face half Dan. See, Leaf is a warrior. Give this man credit. No complaints, only action. This guy really took the chain theme and went all the way with it. Half Dan went full chain. <laughs> yeah, how could you forget a thing like that? I can't allow you to become unchained. <gasps> oh my god, he was not playing around. The law is the chain. Life is chain. Well, he's found something. He's found some kind of life philosophy. Give him that. It is encouraging, though. This is early and not much to go on, but this is the second, I guess, antagonistic force that we've been introduced to in five minutes, and both of them have principles. <laughs> Neither of them are just ruthless evil for its own sake. That's very encouraging. I get the sense that the characters are going to be really rich. It also, just watching the, the backdrop of this, the way it's been set up so well in the first episode, I get the feeling that it's just a lot of people trying to make the best out of a really difficult situation. Some people do it better than others. You know, some people try to be strong for their family and do the right thing. Some people venture out and try to conquer lands for their people and others just embrace the life of the chain. But everyone has something. This is a tough call. Very difficult call for Thor, who seems to be responsible for the entire village in a sense. And birds. Yeah, we know the we know their background, right? They fled to avoid captivity. This guy sort of lucked out ending up here. Yeah, he gets it. Giving him hope. Yeah, Vinland is a, is a symbol. It's not just a place. It's like hope to escape this cruelty. It's a big day for Thorfinn. He's even witnessing death. He's going to take it more literally though, because he's a kid. Vinland is going to actually be a solution to their problems in his mind. The respect though. Yeah, but we don't really do that here. What do you do if you're... Yeah, that's true, but it doesn't solve the problem. Ooh, I'll buy him from you. Very diplomatic solution. His men are watching. Yeah, that too. He's huge. He's full Thors. Didn't you see what happened to the other guy? Did you want to get chained? It's very wise. That's a lot of ooze. Use. Yeah, it's not a lot more than that, though. Can't put a price on your values. This guy's just holding the whole thing on his shoulders, like the whole world. He's just almost too good. He's almost too good for this. <laughs> Oh no, and he died. Although, I don't know, he still did the right thing. I, it hurts, I know, but... Oh, this is really beautiful. Oh, he's just too good for this world. It's making me nervous. He's, he's a Mufasa father. Mufasa character. All these 
Aurora Borealis belongs to you. There's something very Ned Stark-like about him as well, adding to the list of things that makes me really nervous for his character. I also know from the intro that we're gonna get a time skip and the kid's gonna age up. The father's like this boundary between this kid's beautiful life and just what the actual world is, and it's just narratively too good to last. It also creates something almost impossibly large for Thorfinn to live up to. Props to the show for making me so attached to Thor's in just the first episode. He's just such a beautiful character. Like he's got the, the heart and the power and the reason, the priorities. Like I want to see his story more than I want to see Thorfinn's. <laughs> but then Thorfinn has a really interesting journey as well because his father gave them all this, you know, gave them this life, this structure, this feeling of safety, allowing them to grow up and, you know, explore and have dreams and fantasies. And Thorfinn can have the legacy of taking that and improving things for, for his people, you know, getting them to Vinland, whatever Vinland might be. You know, as I, as I said, I suspect it's not as much a place as it is sort of an idea. Deal. Just putting myself in, in Thorfinn's kid shoes, Thor's must seem like this untouchable god man and, you know, the barrier keeping all the, the demons at bay. Wow, that was such an insane first episode. And then a very peaceful, peaceful ending. A lot of focus on nature and its beauty. Beauty and cruelty. Very interesting shot. Ooh, the falling sword again. I knew that was going to be significant. Back to the field. Any grown up orphan. I can tell this is going to be a ride. So many things about the first episode give me give me hope, make me really excited. One is that I think it's really, really hard to do what the show did and establish this level of characterization from the first episode. Like, I'm already in love with Thor's. I'm deeply in love with this man, even though he's not blonde, you know, we'll forgive him for that. But not just him. We haven't really seen too much from Thorfinn yet, except that, you know, he's right at the starting point where he's a kid and there's about to be a whole lot that unravels before his eyes and he's a lot to aim for. But aside from the principal characters, I'm, I'm excited just to see Half Dan, however small a part he might play. And... Oh man, what was his name? Harold, who might be the big bad, just because they seem life, lifelike. Hat then is kind of extreme in his, you know, love of chains, but there's obviously a lot of thought being put into everything, everyone. This doesn't seem like it's going to be the type of show where there's just like an evil. I feel like there's going to be a rare kind of richness to not just the main characters, but to the entire extended cast. And then just visually, it's it's really beautiful. The action scene in the beginning was really exciting, really well done. The music seems really solid and interesting so far. It's a really nice change of pace just to have this time period, having it be uh, Viking-ish, having it be centered on the ocean. It just seems very well conceived from the beginning all around. So it's just dripping with potential. I know that, you know, a lot of things are going to go down in the first couple episodes. The journey's got to be launched. I'm bracing myself for, for tragedy, but I can tell it's going to be really easy to get invested in this. This is the type of show that if I wasn't doing reactions and wasn't limited by editing, I would binge watch in like a day. There's something so, so gripping about it. So yeah, that's episode one of Vinland Saga. I'm very impressed. Thank you to everybody who suggested this show and also the other shows that are coming on the channel. This show and the other two coming soon, which are Violet Evergarden and Haikyuu, were chosen by a series of very eventful Patreon polls. <laughs> but yeah, so far I'm, I consider myself very lucky that I've never been steered wrong. You guys have excellent taste. Thank you to all patrons for weighing in and for participating in the process, for sharing your opinions, making really excellent cases for all the shows, being super patient as well, just because, you know, it takes me time to watch all, all of the shows. And of course, thank you for making these videos possible at all. Without Patreon support, I would not be able to do this at all. If you're watching on YouTube, consider signing up for Patreon. It is what makes these videos possible. Also, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. I know some people have been following me for a long time and haven't. I recently checked analytics and 50% of my views are non-subscribers and I've never really cared about metrics, but it's something I would like to focus on a little bit more going forward. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Thank you also to all patrons who signed up for the top tier over the last couple weeks or month. Shout out to Riksu, Snidely Whiplash, Liam Matheson, Nico, and Jermaine B. Thank you to you. Thank you to all patrons. Thank you to everybody watching across all platforms. Love you guys as always, and I'll see you very soon for the next episode, next couple episodes of Vinland Saga.